Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Stage 72 here in New York City. The last couple of years, jazz guitarist Jake Hertzhawk has definitely made an impact in the music world. In fact, he's taken his unique style of jazz guitar and fused all types of popular music, ranging from funk as well as rock and roll. Tonight we sat down and we talked about his latest album, Throwback, on the Zoho Records imprint, which features the great legendary trumpeter Randy Brecker, as well as Harvey S. on bass, as well as Victor Jones on drums. So sit back, relax, enjoy the sounds of Mr. Jake Herzog live here. Jake, this album is really a very powerful and very sonic recording, and you have some heavyweights on this record. You've got Harvey S., Victor Jones, and special guest Randy Brecker. How did you get these guys together, and what were you trying to do when you put this record together? Well, I've been very, very fortunate the past uh, few years to work with Harvey S. and Victor Jones on a regular basis, and one of the things I love the most about them is they both come from a jazz place and also from a rock place. And there are two of the few musicians out there that I think can float between those universes with equal uh, honesty and proficiency. And, and so that has always been the, the, the genesis of this group. Uh, and I felt like we made three trio records. And I thought w most of the trio stuff that we've done has, has been a little bit like more done like a rock record with some sound changes and overdubs and layering and things like that. And I thought, let's try to make a 60s style jazz record where we just go into the studio in one day, set up a couple mics and play it down like an old Rudy Van Gelder type of vibe. And I wanted to do a quartet, so to make it into the classic, you know, jazz quartet type of thing. And I've always loved trumpet, always loved trumpet players. And Randy Brecker, ever since I started playing, was a guy that I've admired. And I knew that Harvey had worked with him, and I said, Harvey, do you think we could ask Randy Brecker to play on this and see what he'd say? And so Harvey introduced me, and we gave him one of the old CDs, and he said, yeah, I'll do it. 
So that was that. We got together a few times, and, and I feel very fortunate that it all worked out. And, you know, you, you brought something up about Victor and Harvey, and Randy also has to go in that rock R&B soul vein, too, because, you know, he and his brother in the 70s and 80s were doing their thing, too. Absolutely. I mean, that's what makes him so perfect for this style of playing is because just like Harvey Victor comes from a jazz place equally and comes from a rock place. And it's hard to find musicians who can do that. And Randy is maybe one of the best uh, living examples of a cat who's been equally successful in many genres and and uh, uh, well regarded and also is just so talented in the way he delivers things and the way he plays and the sound that he has. And I felt like if anybody could understand the concept here, it would be him. And I really felt like he nailed it, home run, knocked it out of the park. And, and I told the guys a little bit, um, I wanted us to think about the band like, uh, kind of like a grunge band or any of those rock bands that had a lead singer and a guitar bass drum. So you could think of, you know, your, uh, your Pearl Jams and your uh, U2s and Green Day and these kind of bands. And the trumpet is the lead singer. And that was kind of our concept for the record. I love his music, I love his guitar playing, uh, and he's a really cool dude. And so he, he, he and I are very similar, you know, thinking-wise, you know, that you can take a form, a jazz form or a blues form, and expand it and stretch it and turn it into something beyond uh, a, a, a small word like jazz, you know, this is beyond that, this is, they should call this beyond music. But Jake's a wonderful guy, and I always told him, if I play guitar, I would want to sound like him. When was the first time you were aware of Jake? About, about four, about five years ago. Five years ago, Michael Wolf, piano player that I played with for some years, uh, 
great piano player, uh, turned me on to Jake. Jake walked in his Knickerbocker Club downtown in Manhattan, and Michael Wolf says, Jones, you should play with him. And, you know, I always trusted his instincts and his uh, ideas and everything. So I started playing with him. He played in my band. I have a band called Controversy. Check it out. He's on this record, too. It's called Controversy. Jake Hertog and, and my electric, funky, acid jazz band. So he played on a couple of cuts of that and sang on it. And it's been a wonderful experience. And it's only going to get bigger and better and hipper and hotter. You're playing with these veteran players. I mean, you're a relatively young guy. You're, what, 23, 24 years old? 27 now. <laughs> okay, you're 27. Okay, you got this maturity that's just on point with a lot of musicians that are their age. Tell me, how did that come about? Well, thank you for that. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of music is learned through osmosis. And uh, I, I'll bring up something I read once, uh, and I think it was a Pat Metheny interview, but it might be another uh, musician of that caliber. He said, if you can surround yourself with the best musicians you can possibly find, you'll learn the most. And so that's always been my goal, is just to try to find the players who would teach me the most by me interacting with them and working with them. And, and I, I found uh, some wonderful teachers in Harvey and Victor Jones and other guys uh, of that generation that I've gotten the chance to play with, like uh, Michael Wolf and Mike Clark and, um, you know, uh, Barry Ouchel and cats like that who are really just on that, on that true artist level. And so for me, it's just been a journey of constant aspiration, trying to uh, absorb anything they had to teach me through their music and, and try to incorporate that into what I'm doing. You know, we spoke earlier about, you know, <laughs> the concept of your guitar style there's there's elements of straight ahead jazz but there's also straight ahead rock i mean there's stuff that you're doing that jeff beck has done over the years um joe beck has even done some yeah. of that uh i did there's carlos santana <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> tell me how hard and how easy it is to keep the straight ahead jazz fans on point with what you're doing, but also bridging the gap to bringing some of the rockheads to what you're doing. Well, I think that's a that's a great question. I think that um, to me, what jazz is and what jazz has always been is uh, the constant search for uh, improvised music. And as we have gone through the evolution of the history of jazz, we've seen different sub styles emerge. You know, from bebop and all the stuff that came after that. And so, so like any artistic movement, it's fragmented slowly but surely like a fractal into many different uh, styles and sub-genres. Sub but, but I think that all of those styles, the fusion stuff, the this modern straight-ahead stuff, the, the, um, you know, the, the traditional straight-ahead stuff, they all have this sort of search for, for improvisation in them. And so I felt like the stuff that Jimi Hendrix was doing and the stuff that Jeff Beck was doing and Carlos Santana and... And uh, all of those guys, to me, that was equally jazz in the same sense that what Wynton Kelly and Wes Montgomery and, and uh, uh, you know, Clifford Brown were doing. They were all just searching for that, that improvised music, searching for that next thing to be done. So to me, it, they, are all, they are kind of one in the same, uh, you know, and then you look at how some people like Pat Metheny or uh, Bill Frizzell, John Schofield have gone between the rock and the jazz place throughout their careers and and to me that's all one just uh one journey through searching for the next concept
you've been around the block and then some. And tonight, you have played with a gentleman that really is bringing a new voice to this music. Tell me about what you think he's going to bring to the future of this music. Well, um, I think Jake um, has, over the years, and in a short amount of years, has studied so many styles. And I think he's put them all together and created uh, his his own sound. And I think that, that he will actually kind of raise the bar a little bit because in order to do what Jake does you have to have a good knowledge of jazz, a really good knowledge of funk and R&B and a really good knowledge of pop music and and all and his use of effects is really quite amazing. So he's got quite a lot there uh, to say in 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 his music. So and I'm glad to be a part of it cuz I I can you know, I can play acoustic bass with him, I can play electric bass with him, we can play different styles, and so we can go pretty much anywhere. So, yeah, I think he's going to bring a lot to the music as soon as he catches on a little more, and I think that's inevitable. Tell me about growing up in Champaign, Illinois. Tell me about the first time you were exposed to the music as well as what brought your psyche to the guitar. Um, well, it, I think the guitar has always been a, a magnet for me. Um, I have f photographic evidence of me two years old trying to play, <laughs> trying to play a little toy guitar, and so I'm not sure what exactly it was. But I used to watch these tapes of Peter, Paul, and Mary, and try to play along, and and you know, at three or four years old, and Peter, Paul, and Peter, Paul, and Mary, check that out. They and and I loved the tapes because they were just like two two you know, folks holding the and guitar, they and they were jamming. It was great, blowing in the wind and Puff the Magic Dragon and all. So that that's what probably my my first musical cogent memory. But but I think, uh, you know, in, in Champaign, there's a great university there, University of Illinois. And, and through that, through the arts that are happening at the university, there's a wonderful performing arts center called Craner Center for Performing Arts, and they always had great bands coming through. Um, and uh, about... I guess it was my last year of high school, They, uh, another guy came in to run the jazz faculty, great saxophone player, composer, Chip McNeil, who was in uh, Arturo Sandoval's group, and and so I got the chance to study with him, and I studied with a great guitar player named Kevin Turner, uh, who lived there, and so I felt like it was a small community, but it was very supportive of the arts, and, and still is. I mean, it's a wonderful little um, gem in the middle of the Midwest in terms of the art scene in general. Who are some of the people besides Peter, Paul, and Mary? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Peter, Paul, and Mary. I mean, they, they, were, they were part of the whole folk rock element oh, yeah. in the 60s. They're sure. very important. Who are some of the people that you were listening to, some of the people that influenced you? The, fir the, the first guys that I really loved were the blues guys. The, uh, I started with the, sort of the British blues guys that probably most... 14 year olds start listening to Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck and and you know Rolling Stones and the Beatles and all that stuff and then when I started studying it I I thought well it seems to make sense to kind of go chronologically so I went back and got all the all the old uh, you know Tiny Grimes and Les Paul stuff and all of this you know that kind of was the beginning of the jazz and um, and I tried to look at the rock genre like that too so I went back and I started listening to like uh, you know your Bo Diddley's and your Buddy Holly's and and uh, um, the rock icons. The, yep the, the original cats then then that you know that gave birth to after the British invasion you know all those bands in the 60s and 70s what was your take when you found out about the three kings Albert King Freddie King and BB King <laughs> <laughs> well, it kind of it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Uh, I just I thought you know they have very different styles of playing, but they're all coming from the a similar bag. And what what blows me away about those players is how emotional they are, and that emotionality transcends all technical limitations or all you know the the simplicity of the music that they're playing. And just the emotion, the lyrics, and the in the singing and in the guitar is is stunning, and I think still measures up with any of the greatest music of, of, of any era. You know, I, I was, you know, listening to some Stevie Ray Vaughan mm. a, a couple <laughs> of days ago. And Albert King is probably my favorite blues guitarist, bar none. 
and you can't help but to listen to Albert King and know that he was a big influence on him. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a little bit what we were talking about earlier. I mean, here's a guy, Steve Ray Vaughan, who came and he took the Albert King stuff and the, and, you know, the old originators of the blues, that material, and, and he totally put a new spin on it and played it with such deep conviction and emotion and it just like makes your blood boil listening to him play the guitar it's just amazing the first time i saw that stevie ray vaughn austin city limits dvd i i i lost my mind i just watched it i wore it out <laughs> and and you know it just like to me that's the classic example of like what a great what great artistry should be is you know you draw from the historical influences and yet create something something else with it That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. Reporting live here at Stage 72 here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Jake Herzog for his time, as well as the staff for managing me here at Stage 72 here in New York. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. <laughs>